Okay, so this, okay, this is something that you would eat and uh, you put it on the barbecue. And Chicken. It's my favorite. Beef. Um, you can't say beef. Mom, I'm not the one saying the things. Did you get that? Just shh. You can't say shh. Okay, Mom, I can okay, say let's shush. Let's just move on. You can't say shush. Kebab. Mom, it's kebab. It says I can't say shish. 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 And I could say it because I don't have it. And that's why there's a thing here so that I can't see okay, what it is. Let's just move on. Let's just move on. Drew, do you get mad when you get buzzed like that in a game? Like, is that a thing for you? It's it's hard not to be at least a little bit infuriated when you hear that, it, like, that noise. It's like it makes you rage, doesn't it? But you messed up. It's your fault. If, if you did, but then you're you mad at yourself. Word. You're you mad at the, the person. So you said it, so you're mad at yourself. Yeah. But then you're also mad at the person buzzing you for calling you out for messing up. And it's like, it's a reminder of how much you might have sucked in that moment. And yeah. I hate it. And is, is there like a such a thing as like a, a like a disrespectful buzz, like a hard buzz and a soft buzz? Yeah. It, like but a, what's worse, the harder buzz, like the or the big. Like, <laughs> so I, think, I, I don't know. I thought you got the hard, hard buzz has got to be the answer is more annoying. But there is something about the short buzz where it's like something. It's like cocky. I don't know. <laughs> either way like i find that sound it's almost like grating is the right right word and I, and I don't like it so don't buzz me please yeah but anyway uh this is our episode on taboo drew yes uh, we've changed to board games we've, we're done with movies <laughs> board game podcast <laughs> the last last board podcast yeah, here we are welcome back board, yeah. so well, they're bored they're bored all right already <laughs> Welcome back to the Last Row podcast, or Piodcast, if you've been with us for a while. This is episode 120, 120. 120. It is our annual holiday month, so happy holidays to everybody that is out there listening to this. If you are in the month of December of 2022 listening, welcome back, Badway. I'm excited. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and... Well, I guess not Happy New Year yet. Happy, happy, happy Holidays and New Year's. I, I always say that to everyone. Like, I go, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. It's like one, it's like one big blurb. And then it's <laughs> like, I have to correct myself. No, it's not a New Year yet. Is that like saying Happy Thanksgiving and Merry Christmas together? Or is it like not as much because New Year's is more of a complimentary holiday? Or- New Year's is much more complimentary than Thanksgiving is to Christmas. Let's, yeah. We've talked about this before. We need to we separate have. Thanksgiving from Christmas. Let's enjoy Thanksgiving a little longer. Don't steal my Thanksgiving yeah. here. Speaking of, did you have a lovely Thanksgiving? I did. It was good. It was spent some time with some family. We we did. Hopefully, others were listening to our son in law episode. Go back and listen yeah. to it, episode one nineteen. I had a nice yeah. Thanksgiving. How about how about you? I had a very 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 nice relaxing Thanksgiving. Thank you for asking. And if you're looking for our son in law episode or any of our previous episodes, or you're new to the show, check us out thelastrowpodcast dot com. That's our website. If you're looking for us on all the social media channels, our handle is at the last row pod, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Check us out on Spotify and Podchaser, and also check us out on YouTube. If you're enjoying the show and you prefer to listen on YouTube, if you're listening on YouTube right now, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, leave a comment on, on, the, on the page here. I'm excited, by the way. This is, uh, it's the beginning of the holiday season, and we, we've got a good one here, I think. Yeah, I think our back catalog of Christmas movies are uh, pretty enjoyable. You know, what It's kind of strong, in my opinion. But you go all the way, Home Alone 2, Jack Frost, the Michael Keaton one, not the horror one. <laughs> Jack Frost is a very underrated episode. Yeah. If you haven't listened to our Jack Frost episode, yeah. go back. It's one of yeah. my favorite yeah. ones. Just Friends, Love Actually, Santa Claus. And there's maybe even a few more that I'm missing. But anyways, today we're doing four Christmases. Add another starring one to the list. Starring Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon. Not a, not a classic Christmas movie, but enjoyable nonetheless. November 26, 2008 was its release date. This is kind of like that weird time in movies where it's like, there's some bangers, and then there's a lot of forgettable yeah. stuff. And this probably falls into the forgettable category, but it's good to remember. The, the mid two thousands or like the the late two thousands. It's you're right, and it's a Vin, the heyday of Vince Vaughn here too. Yeah, and we got a runtime of one hour twenty eight minutes. That's, that was perfect for me, right? Just now. about right. Yeah, it's just about right. <laughs> Christmas movies. Perfect. They have you know they can linger. This one, this one, knew to get in and get out. It was perfect for me. Yeah. I liked it. Comedy slash romance slash Christmas, directed by Seth Gordon, not Seth Rogen. Seth oh, Gordon, not Zordon, not Z- not Zordon. <laughs> Seth Zordon. <laughs> I don't know. This guy's pretty good. He he does a lot of comedies. Horrible bosses. Baywatch, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Were you cetera. disappointed in Baywatch when you saw it? I don't want to. I don't want to go on a tangent about Baywatch, but I have to ask you because I'm a no. Baywatch TV fan and I like The Rock. Yeah, I was not disappointed. I thought it was funny. I was entertained by it. Yeah. It was different than what I expected. We'll, we'll do that one one day. But oh, it's, it's missing. It's missing start in the a, library. We should start a Baywatch podcast and we a rewatch <laughs> of Baywatch. Baywatch watch along. Baywatch <laughs> along. Yeah. We're Baywatch along. Yeah. Bay rewatchable. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've already I'm already taken us off the rails here, and it's yeah. like it, it literally is. What is the time right now? It's 12:09 a.m. as we record this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. I think I could I could tell like the flow is off, isn't it? It's yeah. just a little bit off. We feel a little off. It's okay. Hang stick with, with us, people. people. We'll get stick, but we'll get we'll get it going. <laughs> don't we'll get don't it going. Hit stop, please. Yeah. Or maybe we won't. It'll be a train wreck either way. <laughs> Keep listening. IMDb 5.7 out of 10. Let's get them back on track, and it's too right. It's too just right. right. Too right. It's just just right. right. I like this movie, but it's not a good movie. I like how you did that. I like right? how you did that. Yeah, thank you. Rides made at 25%. Now that's too, too low. low. A little disrespectful. That's too, it's like that's, a, this, this movie's like a 48%. Right? That's lower than Son in Law, I'm pretty sure, by the way. Yeah. So that's too low. Metacritic 41%, probably about right. Yeah. Just about a couple right. Decimal points a little higher. Letterbox 2.6 out of 5. 30,000 votes. Perfect. It's probably just about right. right. Just probably right. about right there. When their plans for an exotic vacation fall apart, unmarried couple Brad, played by Vince Vaughn, and Kate, played by Reese Witherspoon, must spend Christmas Day trudging around to a quartet of family get-togethers. This is more unrealistic than like the Santa Claus. I think, it is going. To it actually is. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> You While believe Brad, a man can become yeah. Santa Claus yeah. instead of going to four instead of going day. to four different houses in one day at one Christmas day, including a church service. Yeah. While Brad counts the hours <laughs> till he can escape at the onslaught of crazy relatives, Kate begins to wonder about her own choices and ponders whether her family members are so crazy after all. <laughs> Rated R. I agree with what you said there. Like this, this is less believable than a man becoming Santa Claus by putting yeah. a jacket on. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can't, you can't, you can force a jacket on a man, but you can't force a man to go to four Christmases. Yeah, include like I said, including a church service, like that's going to yeah, take up half the day church, right there. Yeah, that kind church. of church too. We'll get yeah. to that later. Hashtag. We'll get to that later. Taglines: His father, her mother, his mother, and her father, all in one day. It's confusing, but I kind of like I, it. I kind of like it too. You know? It's good. I like it. This one was in French, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. But they gave me the translation, so I'm going to include it. For them, the holidays are a real nightmare. That's too bland. Too, too bland and too too, too obvious. Too too much trying to be funny. Yeah. Uh, here's one. Four families, one day, no mercy. That's fine. I would have changed no mercy into something else, but I, it does the rule of three, yeah. which is good for taglines. I like the first one the best. I, I think yeah. the first one. Yeah. Now, let me tell you something that might shock you. I'm gonna, shock I'm gonna give all? you something that might shock you. You won't believe what what movie cost eighty million dollars oh, oh, to make. Man. Click here to see see more. Oh, man, don't click, baby. Now, so eighty million was the budget for this thing. What the hell did they spend it on? Like there was no special effects. There was no set pieces outside of one thing, which I'll tell you about in a second. Like, is it actor salaries? Like, what the hell did they spend eighty million on in this? Probably that bouncy house in the back of the of the of the, of the mom's house. I mean, that's, did that's they rent? It. Did they rent out the airport that they used for for the whole thing? Like, what the hell spent eighty million? I I don't understand it. I don't get it either. I mean, it was just a couple of houses. There's literally no special effects going on here. I, it's it makes no sense. And so and then it made one hundred and sixty one. So you know, it doubled the money and it, and it did well. Right? That was that was a, a good return on investment. But the one thing I did see was. They said that Howard's house, uh, Robert Duvall, so they actually built that thing from scratch in oh. Shadow Hills of Southern California, and they did it because they had to reinforce the roof so that they could get the whole crew on the roof and they wouldn't like fall through, <laughs> like okay. in I guess Christmas vacation. Okay, uh, fair enough. So, but I mean, I get eighty million. Yeah. I mean, what does a house cost to make a house like that too? It's like. 300, 500,000, couple hundred thousand, if a million if, max. And it's probably not even a real house. So it's like there's cut corners everywhere because it's just whatever. But it, yeah, I like the inside of that thing though. I like it. It so, looked very dated. Would you, would you say that this movie would be uh, inside or outside the top 20 highest grossing movies of 2008? Do you know the answer to this? I do I know do the not. answer. I do okay. know the answer. 2008. I'm trying to think of what yeah. else actually came out around that time. I'll tell you what number one was Dark Knight. Okay. Well, yeah, and what was that like a billion? 
it was probably not a billion at that time. It was probably what, like 800 million? 500, 531,000. Jeez. At the time. Okay. Uh, a million. Like in 08. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, million. So, okay. Yeah. So then this at 164, and that was number one at five something. Yeah. Maybe it was, I guess. I don't know. It was. It was number 17 out of 20. Interesting. What was the top three? So it was Dark Knight, and then what were the Dark other Dark Knight, two? Iron Man, and Indiana Jones. Okay. And that makes sense. Skull, whatever the hell. Yeah. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That's interesting. This All movie right. did better than Tropic Thunder. Which is a shame because Tropic yeah. Thunder Thunder is is a is yeah. an underrated gem. Yeah. It's a really good movie. This movie made more money than Step Brothers. What? It goes to show you you put the it Christmas makes in the movie. You put the Christmas in the movie, people are going to see it. It is kind of a cheat code yeah. because it's like a kid's movie, right? Like yeah. there's just one out. So you're gonna go yeah. see that. You wanna watch a Christmas movie, you watch that. And then you had Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon and they got yeah. the fan following. So yep. how about how about popular with the kids? So let's get to some awards here. She was nominated for a Blimp Award for favorite oh, mo- movie actress. And it's kind of weird because this is not a kid's movie. And, it, and it's like she was nominated for this movie. It's yeah. a PG-13 sort of like adult comedy in a way. Yeah, right? I, I don't think there's any kids or teens even that would so, say, man, I can't wait to go see Four Christmases. But I guess if you're looking at a kid's choice awards – she's the the it wasn't like best performance it was favorite movie actress but she got nominated for this for favorite movie actress it doesn't make any sense it could be like a running like i like this actress award so it's like and she was in a movie we love year. reese witherspoon we love jennifer aniston and all that stuff yeah. i mean it had her listed for this movie in particular and yeah. speaking of jennifer aniston so she, it was her she didn't win this award so it was her and she went up against jennifer aniston for marley and me which is a kids movie i believe or, or at is. least a family movie it's a dog and movie. then you had Anna Hathaway with Get Smart, which is actually a pretty funny movie with Steve yeah. Carell. And then she lost, no surprise, to Vanessa Hudgens for High School Musical 3 senior year. Can't, you can't beat that. What are you going to do? Beat that? Can't it's a great that. colon, by the way. Yeah. High School yeah. Mu- Musical 3 senior, colon, year. Great, senior year. Great, great, great sequel. Title. It's a great colon. Tying it back to the movie now. I guess our Christmases were pretty normal in comparison because like, we're, we're not children of divorce or anything like that. And I'm sure that plays a monkey wrench into like – Going to multiple, like we go to multiple Christmases and it's like a jovial thing where it's like there's no bad blood or anything like that. It's just a matter of two sides, two different families, you know, having different get togethers, different gatherings, right? So we have a couple, we have two people whose both parents are divorced. So we have the, you know, that's how we get to four Christmases. I guess, first of all, what we got to ask is, is like, what do you think of this, this couple as a couple? Do you buy Reese and Vince as a couple? No, I don't think they have any chemistry. And I I don't, it's just weird. And maybe, maybe it's because I know some of the stuff that they said behind the scenes where there was this whole thing about them not really getting along during filming. Now, whether this is true or not, it's all alleged. But there was a whole story about how Vince Vaughn rolled onto set looking like he just came in from a night out and, and Reese with the spoon was like very professional camera ready. I mean, just... Think about the type of actor that Vince Vaughn is. Yeah. He's more of an improv style actor, and she's, he's a he, yeah, he's a riffer. He's definitely yes. a riffer. And yeah. and they they had even said like they wanted her. She wanted to block out the scenes and, and practice them. And he, and again, allegedly said yeah. that no, I, I want to improv and see where it goes. And and there was a whole thing about they wouldn't even do. She wouldn't even do a love scene because of that. Like she just couldn't stand him. Yeah, I felt like I could see it through the screen. <laughs> Like, I don't know. I just, they were just an odd couple. Like, I actually think he's better with Jennifer Aniston in the breakup. Like, even that's a weird match. Yeah. Like, he he in old school and Leah Remini, whatever you say it, that's a good match. That's a good match there. And you know what? Like, you're right. Because I I think it did show on screen. And it's kind of what took away a little bit from this movie. And it lost a little bit of heart because of that. It's because I, I, I did buy them as a couple. I think uh, the look was there, but like just the the conversations back and forth, it seemed very, I don't know, forced and a little odd. And I just, I didn't buy it. I feel like to your point about Aniston, I mean, Aniston has, you know, however many years of TV experience filming in front of live audiences. Yep. So there, there's a little bit there to probably more apt to not riff so much on friends, but to be able to play off of five other people. Is is much more likely where, where you got Reese, who's kind of just like movie after movie after movie. And if she's not doing these types of comedies, it's certainly not in a real in a real house. I remember hearing a story about Adam Scott back in the day talking about when he did Step Brothers. Like he was not 
traditionally a comedic actor, like in, in that, yeah. in sure. that way. And yeah. he would like, he, I've, I think it might've been on, how did this get made or something? I forgot what, where I was listening to this. I, maybe you, you heard the same story, but he talked about how he felt like he didn't know how to like keep up with like Will Ferrell and like John C. Riley, And, yeah. and it's like a whole thing, right? Yeah. And these are all, these are all time funny people. And, 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 and saying this to say that it's Reese Witherspoon did a good job. In she this did. Movie. I thought she it's did. just, it's just the matching with Vince Vaughn. It hurt them both. I didn't. Know? I didn't think they were a good match from a chemistry standpoint. I think either one of them would have been good. Like you yeah. could have swapped out Vince Vaughn. I, I, by the way, they weren't bad. No, just, they, I didn't buy them and, as a couple. And they both kind of excelled in the in the scenes they had away from each other, like dealing with the families and whatnot. Yeah, but I, like I, scenes of scenes of them in the car together, or scenes of them, you know, uh, you know, canoodling on the side. Though that's that's where it kind of like it showed a little bit when it was weird too because you know where it actually helped towards the end when he was being sort of a jerk yeah like I was like okay this is actually I buy yeah. this oh, they, they hate each other yeah she really she yeah. really like played that up <laughs> and and I by the way I thought she did pretty good in this like I liked the scenes with her and her family and we'll go through these in yeah. a second but you you mentioned this earlier so why are they going to these four Christmases and like what was their plan originally. Yeah, they had a so they have this tradition of so so they're a they will let you know that they're a couple who's been together for a very long time, but they're they refuse to get married. So they don't believe in marriage. They just want to be you know they want to be what they are, and that's that's fine. So then they had a, a few years ago they recognized that well, we don't have to go to Christmases on our vacation. We can take a vacation on our vacation. So they've developed this lie that they go and help whoever they go on these like missions to help sick kids or help impoverished countries. And they're disguising that as a reason why they can't show up for Christmas to their families. But in reality, they're just going to Fiji and the Bahamas or wherever the heck. And it's pretty damn obvious that they're lying, right? It's, I mean, they think they're being slick, but it's yeah. like, and, and the Vince Vaughn has this whole thing where the more specific you are, like, the more like he's like oh the more believable it is i would actually argue the opposite <laughs> yeah you're, you're trying to explain it away too much right yeah you gotta just own it you just say yeah we're not gonna make it like we're going to do this okay yeah. like he's talking about all the specifics of what they're gonna do in burma and he's speaking in, mm. in burmese like yeah like, i mean that was for the joke of the movie but come on <laughs> so long story short they uh their trip to fiji gets canceled their flight gets canceled and it's just so happens to be shown on live tv because there's an event at the at the airport so, you know, family happens to see it, gives them a call right away and say, hey, are you showing up for Christmas now that your flight's canceled? So they get roped into Christmas. And that's it, that's how we got our movie. Let me ask you this, like TV reporters shoving a, a camera and a microphone in your face like that lady was on a mission. Like she yeah. was pushing through the crowd to get to you. Like, is that a violation? Like I, I would I would venture to say that this has never happened to me personally. Um, having an issue at an airline where I'm like arguing with the person behind the counter, which by the way, one got to be one of the worst jobs. That's got to be. Like, I respect it's a that. thankless. It's a thankless job. You're only there to get yelled at, right? Yeah. It's like so. Like it's probably one of the more high intense intensity parts of your life is trying to like put together a broken flight plan, right? <laughs> I'm getting stressed thinking about yeah. it right now. So that's like a top five stress event but not, but not for one that, person right for like how many people get on an airplane yeah like f f at least yeah. 100 people so like the, the the intensity in the room is high then you got a person sticking a microphone in your face asking you how you feel about it it's like imagine uh aaron Rodgers throwing an interception and then immediately goes to the sideline <laughs> And Susie Colbert just sticks a microphone in his face. Hey, Aaron, why'd you throw that that ball so poorly? Wasn't that in the XFL? Like they yeah, did that, right? Like it was, yeah. <laughs> so you just lost the game. How do you feel? Yeah. Man, that was a really crappy pass. Why'd you do that? <laughs> it's like it's not it's not the best time, Susie. Leave me alone. Get out of my face. I mean, they're starting to do that with the coaches, like in between yeah. the quarters. Now they they let them do that. I don't. Yeah. I, they never did that before. But no, I mean, I would I would be pissed off too. But. So, so I guess having said that, right, you mentioned they're going to go through all of these different, these different houses now and you, they're, they're children of divorce, both of them. So they've got four Christmases, four Christmases. So I think maybe what we could do is let's talk about each of these Christmases, one through four, break them down a little bit. And then each one of these, I think we should ask each other, could you get through 
this Christmas? Like, could you have gotten through this one? And and why or why not? Yeah. What do you think? Fair, that's fair enough. Let's get All to right. it. All let, right. Let's start with let's start with the first one. So they go to Vince Vaughn's dad dad's house, played masterfully by Robert Duvall, who did an an awesome job in this. In my opinion was one of my favorite people yeah. in this movie. And his two brothers, played by Tim McGraw and uh, John Favreau, what were their names? Denver and Dallas. Denver, Dallas, and Orlando. <laughs> the joke is uh, they were they were named after the city they were conceived in, which is which is a, a good joke there. Mm-hmm. What what kind of dad do you think Robert Duvall was? We get we get a little bit of a, a window into this one. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it ever said what he does for a living, but I imagine he's the type to work like. 14 long hours in an assembly line or in a factory somewhere where there's a chance that he could lose a limb at any moment. It seems like that kind of worker. I think they said something. It was something along the lines. I forgot what it was because he he was talking about how when they were talking about the satellite installation, like he had he had a a blue collar job where he was a tough guy. Yeah, I feel like like the job he's at, there's like a risk of losing a limb at all times. That's what that's what (laughs) that's the the kind of vibe he's throwing off. He's in the mill. He's in the mill. He's always nursing a beer, so he's constantly got a buzz on. But at this point, he's an alcoholic, so it doesn't really affect him anymore. It's kind of just part. It's 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 his medicine at this point. Gets him back unquote. to equilibrium. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> well, know. I imagine it'd be a tough, it'd be a tough uh, house to grow up in. I imagine. Well, especially when you got two brothers that are UFC fighters, yes. but they don't actually UFC fight. They fight in the backyard, right? It's a, the whole <laughs> so thing about that, how it's not televised. It's, it's even more dangerous because they do it for fun. Yeah. <laughs> And and I didn't even realize I knew Tim McGraw was in it, but it didn't look like him when he no. with him at all. He did a good job because it hit it, he hid himself from the movie. It's like I, he he sunk into the role for sure. So they tried to set this place up as it was a pretty like redneck kind of kind of place, right? I mean, for lack of a better better word, I, I don't know how to describe well, the place. There's like there's hunting trophies everywhere in this house. And I don't know if you if you caught this at the end of the movie when he goes back to his dad's house to like think about what happened transpired throughout the day. His bedroom, Vince Vaughn's yeah. character's bedroom, is like there's like bare skin everywhere. It's like <laughs> outlined his bed. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's a very much like a, a hunter's place. He had all the yeah. trophies. He had the deer on the wall and all that stuff for the food. I mean, they had beer mosas. Oh yeah. So have you? I don't even know. That just sounds so gross. A beer it's mosa. good. No, it's, you'd, you'd be surprised. You'd be. Surprised. I haven't had it. I've had it. I mean, I guess if you have like you know the traditional juicy IPAs, they're more like a orange juice anyway. I guess. Yeah. But I what? No. So how do you make a beer mosa? What are you using in there? It's orange juice and what? It's orange juice and champagne of beers. A beer. <laughs> 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 it's a highlight. It's a highlight. There it's a highlight. you go. That's yeah. that's that's got to be it. So, oh, and then spray cheese on the crackers. Now, now we're talking. See, you may think this is a nightmare, but this might be my ideal Christmas. It's your kind of Christmas. See, I, I grew up with a sister. You know, we had some some rumbles, but you can't really you can't really fight your sister, even though she probably beat me up until this day. Anyways, <laughs> I feel like She's I would have I would have thrived in a household where there were fights going on all the time, like. I used to, I I used to be friends. I'm, I'm still friends, but like we used to hang out every day with the I had this group of brothers, right? And um, similar to one, these guys, yeah. There's one younger than me and three older than me, and the three older were a lot larger than us, than us younger two younger guys. And we would get put through the ringer, like not in a, not in a uh, like abusive way, but in a like you catch up quick and like you you learn to like take a beating. And you can even dish it out. No punching in the face or anything like that, but like hardcore wrestling, that kind of thing. Go where it's a like, table? Yeah. Very much like this UFC type stuff where it's like make you tap out or, <laughs> you know, just put on holds and stuff and like really put the pain on. Right. And uh, I feel like if I could have cultivated that more, it's like maybe, <laughs> maybe I, I could have, I could have done this. I could have beaten John Favreau's ass, come back for Christmas. But it's like they're fighting. But are you down? Like, are you down with the more casual nature in which this place is? Like, it, it didn't seem like there was any expectations. Like, they got a ten dollar limit, which we got to have a, talk about that in a second. Yeah. Like, so you like the fighting? You like sort of the casual, like whatever Christmas beer cheese and, Seems, and whatever. Here's what it is: it's it's low stress. I mean, yep. if you consider, if you don't consider <laughs> fighting stress. a stress, I mean, you get attacked. 
<laughs> so I mean, clearly Vince it. Vaughn was was stressed about entering the Thunderdome, right? <laughs> It's one way to describe it. And I imagine if you enter that household, you oh, probably you, you would probably be on edge too. That you would not be my kind of You don't of want John Favreau putting you in a front face lock immediately and upon entering the face. house. Yeah. And, and face something. Whereas you. I would be like, all right, bitch, let's go. Game on. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would kind of like it. I don't know. I'm just being honest. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was certainly an interesting place. Yeah. Low expectations. $10 gifts, so it's like nobody's mad about the gifts because we're all going to be kind of crappy anyways. You know, I, I'm all for that. That's that's that, that's a nice, relaxing Christmas. You know, safe, uh, safe for the fights, you know, but I would be cool with that. Let, Other people, well, not so much. Let's talk about the $10 spending cap. So I don't know if these are violations. So like, I don't know how to tally this because for each one of these things, right, something either goes wrong or, or something is maybe a violation by them or a family member. And we're already talking about violations here, so maybe we could talk about this. But like, they had this thing where it was a ten dollars spending cap. They're not all very well off, mm-hmm. and and he busts out probably like, you know, your ideal the present you mentioned before, where it's like, holy crap, what like is that a violation? The fact that he did that, that he bought the kids an Xbox, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, ah, yes, yes, and no. Well, first of all, he didn't know the, he didn't know the limit. No, he's a lawyer. Him. I think they said right. I, yeah. He's he's got a very good job. Yeah. Nobody told him the limit. First of all, but then they say you would know the limit if you showed up every year. You haven't <laughs> showed up in five years, which fair enough, fair point. But still, I mean, at the end of the day, it benefits the kid. It's not like he's you know he's not trying to rub it in anybody's face, right? I think it's a he's giving the kids thing, but the brother. but he's giving the kid at the end of the day he's giving the kids a nice thing that they never yes. thought they would have. I agree with that. I agree with that. You know, I guess his brother's pissed because it makes him look bad. Sure, it does, but I don't know. Uh, maybe that should have been the last gift. Okay, there you, you know, go. it was like the first thing that they busted out, and then like, what does he give but, him? But also, to be fair, the dad's gift to the youngest son was a flashlight, <laughs> like a like a standard Home the Depot checkout. D battery flashlight. <laughs> it wasn't even like a good one, like a mag yeah. light. It's like the yeah. kind that you get yeah. at the checkout. It was a Lowe's. cheap one. It was a cheapo one. It wasn't a mag light. <laughs> like, hey, you you buy a stick of gum and you get this flashlight yeah. Yeah. Like the, the, at the end of the checkout there. What about, then he also told the kids basically there was no Santa and he thought nothing of it. Like, yeah. I, I know the kids are a little older. They were pretty old. What, how old do you think the youngest one was? Like I, eight? Maybe eight? Ten? I don't know, not 10, probably. Maybe it was like maybe it was like 8 and 12 those kids were, maybe. But I feel like you can't assume. Like you just can't assume. Yeah, uh, he has no idea how to handle kids. Like what does yeah, he that's know true. kids? In fairness right? to him, he yeah. doesn't know. He, yeah. he he doesn't know. Like uh, Santa Claus, it's ridiculous. That's Santa Claus. It's like to yeah. him. To him it's ridiculous. What about his gift to his dad? Are you for or against it? What what did he get his dad? Okay, so I'm against it. And I, like, I'm for him getting his dad a nice gift. Uh, spending limit be damned. Because whatever. It's your dad. It's right? your dad. You it's can do dad. something nice. You can do something nice. You have the money. You can do something nice. Right. They took now, care people, of you. Now, people, people like this might take offense to it. And say, right. What are, you, what are you throwing in my face? Which kind of they do a little bit there. But the specific gift of the satellite dish is not something I would gift anyone. I don't care <laughs> about the money. It's like a burden. <laughs> it's a burden. And it's like, a, it's giving them something to add on to their house where it's like, what if you don't want it? Yeah. You can't assume that somebody wants a satellite dish on their yeah. house. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a permanent uh, fixture on your house and, uh, and it changes the way you watch TV. Some people may be very specific about where they watch TV. It's like, you could be, you might love your cable package, right? Well, and this dude had the oldest ass TV of yeah. all time with rabbit ears on it. Right? right. He seemed like a man that knew what he liked yeah, he wasn't about now, that darn fangled new technology. But even still, it's like if you would have bought him a big screen TV, like that would have been f- much better, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, than giving someone satellite cable. They might not want satellite TV. That's <laughs> it's a hassle, and it goes out all the time. And like, if you didn't ask for it, and you're trying to watch the game, and all of a sudden it starts raining, and you can't, like, we, th- you're gonna be mad at the sun, not mad at Direct TV. I gotta tell you, like, I remember having. We had direct TV back in the day, and it's because we wanted yeah. the Sunday ticket. We talk about when we back live in the apartment together. Yeah. And like the idea of it was great. Yeah. But I hated it. Like, but I. You, you remember, like. It was annoying. 
I hope it doesn't rain because yeah, we, might not get, we might not get the game. <laughs> <What? laughs> it, it, you know, it only went out like half a half a minute one time, I think. Yeah, it wasn't. It was never a major deal. No. But it was like annoying. And look, I have yeah. YouTube TV right now and, and say what you will about price. But it's just the convenience of that is amazing to me. I can watch it, it on my phone. I can watch it on my computer. It's never down. It's never, never down. Never and and down. but but you're right. So the other thing is they bought him the satellite. So yeah. having a satellite, I, we say it's a burden. He, he's like, what? Now I got to pay for this thing? He's right. And, <laughs> but then then he looked at Reese Witherspoon and Reese Witherspoon gave him a face. And then it was like, oh, but no, no, we're, we're the subscriptions included. Was it always included or was no. it because of the way that he reacted? No, they just, he said that on the fly, I think. Because you're signing somebody up for yeah. something that they don't want to pay for as a gift. It's like. <laughs> That is yeah. a violation. It's going to be freaking eighty dollars the first month, one hundred twenty dollars the second, or you know second year, the Direct first TV year. Works. Yeah, eighty dollars year one, one twenty year two, one fifty year three, and then five hundred. Like they yeah. jack the price up yeah. so easily. <laughs> Do you remember, like you couldn't walk into Best Buy without the Direct TV guy in your face. Saying, oh like, yeah. Oh, you're going to sign up? It's like it's only twenty dollars a month. We had the kiosk at Blockbuster the one the one summer, and it, I dreaded it. I did not want to talk you know, people into satellite TV. No freaking I mean, way. I. Look, I'm not going to dump on satellite if you have it, you like it, but man, and, and the people are just doing their job, but geez, man, it was annoying as hell. You couldn't yeah. walk in there without having somebody in your face about it. I feel like you don't need satellite TV sold to you. I feel like you, you know you, you want, want it, it or you don't want it. People want it. They're going to sign up for it. Come to rent your movies and I'm not going to talk somebody into taking satellite TV. I'll I never, agree with that. I, I refused. I but refused. I, but I think it it is absolutely a violation. That's like, I don't even know. It's like trying to think of what it is like an equivalent of this where you're basically giving somebody something and they can't use it without paying a monthly fee yeah it's it's like if i gave you i, I guess i bought you a phone and you didn't have a phone and it's like yeah well, i gotta pay there for this go. here look i got you an iphone it's like yeah. wait, i don't i don't have a cell phone service. i don't want a cell phone wait, wait. it's like oh here uh you know you got a here's a lexus with a bow on it yeah it's like oh you bought me a car it's like, no 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 yeah i just i kind of put the cars in your name yeah, and I put, two, I put I put I put two thousand down on it. Here you go. <laughs> That's why I think it's so dumb when you see the Lexus commercials. Like, and people call that all the time. It's become a yeah. meme. It's like you're buying the car, but it's you 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 bought the car. Like, what yeah. if she didn't want that car? What if, <laughs> a different car? <laughs> what, what's what's worse, uh, getting the satellite, or what if what if it was a dog in that box? Yeah, the dog might even be worse because what about the, pet, you, the pet has gift. The pet has a gift. You better be damn sure that they want that. I, I'll yeah. say this. Anything with a subscription, that subscription better be included for life if you're yeah. buying that gift. You pay yeah. that guy's satellite bill forever. Yeah, satellite radio, where it's another thing where it's like you could buy somebody that as a gift, but it's like unless the free trial runs out, it's, it's going to be on your dime. And, and then you got to put the thing. It's like you yeah. have the radio. Now it's built into your car, but like back in yeah. the day, right? Didn't you yeah, have, you'd that? have you to buy? Like you have, used thing. to have to buy an adapter. Yeah. And, and it was like very easy to gift someone that. And then but you'd have like, to like sling it through your window and then your yeah. window starts getting jacked up. Like yeah, it was a whole thing. Yeah. It's it the whole, whole thing. thing. Here's this gift for you. Uh, one, one other thing before we move on from this Christmas, I want to ask you this because we talk a little bit about their names being Denver, Dallas, and Orlando. So we, we learned that Vince Vaughn's name was Orlando and not Brad. And he changed yeah. his name to Brad because he didn't like the name Orlando. And it was before he met Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. But she's like shocked and offended that he didn't tell her that his name used to be Orlando. Now, I have a very specific side of the fence that I'm on for this. Which side of the fence are you on for this? It's a good question. Do you question. think it's okay or not? It's a good question. If they're, to, if they're together officially yeah. for like a decade, which they might be. I think a they only said know. it was three years. I think was they said years? it was three. It okay, wasn't. Three it years. wasn't a ton. I don't know if that changes my mind or not. I'm okay with him just calling himself Brad. It's but his legal I, name. Yeah. Uh, but again, this is, could be a marriage thing. This could be like there's like pros and cons of being married versus versus uh, being you know have the freedom of not having the legality attached to it. If you're married, you gotta know it's Orlando. But if you're not married. He's freaking Brad. It's fine. But if he, cha- let's say, we don't know when he changed it, right? His mom yeah. was calling him Bradford. So yeah. it, 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 enough, it was changed enough that the mom called him and she, he went to live with her. I feel yes. like if that was more than 10 years ago, like you don't need to say that your name was Orlando. Like yeah. maybe it comes up and if it comes up, it's like, yeah, that was my name. I changed it. This is yeah. my name. I, I legally changed my name. Like she acted like, 
he he violated like a like a sacred like, thing. Yeah, or it's like, oh, you're hiding. You got secrets from me. You're hiding secrets. It's like yeah, my yeah. secret. My name used to be Orlando. <laughs> is, or, <laughs> is Orlando a bad name? Like if you're gonna be named after a city, is Orlando bad? I think they were implying it, like because Denver and Dallas are are like, and not that Orlando is a bad city. It's like Disney's no. I just mean the name. Right? I mean the name. Would you would you like to be called Orlando or like what's a city that you'd be cool with? I'd rather be called Denver or Dallas. I feel yeah. like if my name was Denver, I think I'd be all right with that. Da- Dallas, I get. I mean, yeah. I get. Yeah, Dallas. People, people are called Dallas. Dallas. People are called Dallas. But what if you were called? I don't know. Uh, see if you're if you were called Philadelphia. You but just, like, what would you, you go by? Phil. Philly? You go by Phil. Hey Philly. Hey, that'd be a cool name. Hey Philly. Yeah. Filthy Phil. Yeah. <laughs> or like, or like, you know, if you have a daughter and you're born in Carolina, you name her Charlotte. Like, Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I guess you're right, but like, yeah. What if you name your kid like Allentown? Like it do, it doesn't make yeah. sense. Right? Yeah, <laughs> like, like so like you could be you, you could be born in Kansas City, Missouri, and then your name's KC. That's a badass name. KC, but but what if your name is Kansas City? Yeah, your name's Kansas City. <laughs> your legal name is Kansas City. I mean, the dad has clearly a strict set of rules to naming his children. <laughs> but is it so wherever Kansas? the deed gets wherever the deed gets done, the deed <laughs> gets done. So or did they make sure not to like do the deed in a city that was like, well, we can't name our yeah. kid that like. <laughs> like I'm trying well, to think of like the worst city that you could be called. And I'm trying to, th- yeah, so I was trying to think of that too. And like, imagine <laughs> the scenario of like, so if he had these three kids with the same mom, then like they were just like going all across the country, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. See if he did, how many motels would have they visited? She, she was a hippie, right? So she was yeah. a free spirit. And maybe the they're out in a van or something. Yeah, they, they were driving, <laughs> driving along the van, living the van life, living back the van the life, day. follow the Grateful Dead or something. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think if your hey. name was Kansas City, is it Kansas yeah. and then City's your middle name? Yeah, you just call yourself KC. Yeah, KC. I like that. Salt Lake City. There's a <laughs> SLC. SLC. I mean, that I is a, that is a very odd yeah. name if your name was Salt Lake yeah. City. Freaking Albuquerque Rahali over here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Albuquerque would be such a weird name. I mean, I no offense to anyone named yeah. Albuquerque here, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Let, let, so, could you get through this Christmas? You said this is your. This is might be your oh, favorite yeah. one. Easy. I'd stay here till freaking midnight. I couldn't. No way. I'd stay here till midnight. I, take me. Listen. First off, I don't think I could even get to Christmas too after this. I'd be going yeah. home. Like, get me well, home. Well, he fell off a roof. That's the thing. So, like, yeah, we the didn't dad, talk the about dad that. made him made him install the freaking satellite dish, even though he insisted on having the pros do it. Dad's like, no, we do things with our hands here. So, yeah, if you fall off the roof, that might end Christmas. Might All end Christmas. I'm gonna say is, and man, I want to talk about this one even more. There's so much to talk about with this, but we got to talk about the others. You mentioned the satellite installation. We didn't even talk about that. It's like a comedic moment, right? But the dad is like you said, he does the thing with his hands. I'm going to go out on a limb and say these guys cannot install that dish. You need to have the the meter that knows where the satellite is. Yeah, like you that's the problem. They, they didn't get it, it didn't work right. It didn't work right because they didn't put it in the right place. Because you, the guy you has don't like a know. GPS. The guy knows you don't know. <laughs> yeah, you, there's no way for you to know. It's yeah. not like moving around like 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 rabbit ears. It yeah. physically needs to be pointed at a very precise location in the sky. Yes. Like you can't guess at that. It's I not know. like you're going to guess. Like move it to the left a little. Move it to the right. It just doesn't work that way. That's like I had I I when I, you picked this movie to watch, this was the scene that stood out to me, and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this movie when this came on. I'm like, I did see this before because I couldn't remember if I saw it, but man, no, but I could I could get through this Christmas. It's fine. Like I, I would I would love to fight John Favreau and, and Tim McGraw. I in the middle, in the middle of the Christmas. Floor. Take me home, man. I tell him Reese build this movie, but I, you got to be a trooper, right? You got to be yeah. a trooper. You're you're in yeah. with her. You got to go to her mom's house. Yep. Christmas number two, and and it is much more favorable to Vince Vaughn. Now this is the kind oh, of yeah. Christmas I can I can get behind here. Like, he had a great time. Yeah, minus the church service for me. Like I, yeah. I'm not. I don't feel like dealing with that. But I think I could be okay at this Christmas. See, this is this is a this is, this was a female dominated Christmas. As much as that was a male dominated Christmas, this is female dominated. I'm okay with that. There's one other dude in the house, and he's the husband of the sister, and he's just playing wheeze. He's just yeah. <laughs> holding the baby. The best best line of the movie was. She plops the baby in his, I don't know, what do you, what do you, what do you call like his that? Arm, his like arm, the, like his, his, his curled arm yeah, while, he's playing, out, like you're while he's a playing game. a video game. And she goes, he's such a good dad, isn't he? <laughs> like, like genuinely, she said that. And it's like, he like had zero reaction to the baby. He's full focus on the game. He's just playing the game. And <laughs> it's like, 
but I think I could get behind this Christmas, right? I, I yeah. it seemed very minus the crazy bouncy house thing going on. There's the the mom, the sisters, and all the other the other ladies of the family. They were very impressed by him because she apparently had some type of childhood where she had cooties and they, they oh she, <laughs> she had a case of the cooties for sure yeah. and there's a look there's a yeah, lot of yeah. violations that we got to talk about here but they also seem very sexually repressed too there was like a weird vibe going on grandma there were, was going off while the, while the grandfather <laughs> it's yeah. very weird yeah. very weird uh moments there and the mom had essentially given herself to pastor phil or whatever the heck the guy's name was i don't pastor even remember phil. pastor was phil, it phil yeah. who don't call him it was dwight yokum but he looked like Tom Petty. <laughs> I thought it was Tom Petty. But there's a lot of violations here. So, I mean, could you get behind this Christmas? Like, how would you feel at this place? So you like the last one. Could you be here? Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a fine Christmas. Like, the whole, like, oh, going back to your parents' house, let's see your baby pictures, like, embarrassing, that kind of thing. It happens. Like, that's fun. I think that's fun. I mean, I think the person that it's that it's the pictures of, they like to pretend like it's embarrassing. But it's like it's all it's all good fun. I mean, it seemed very peaceful. Everyone was very nice. Nobody nobody was overly disrespectful. It seemed pretty normal, right? Uh, there seemed like a weird rivalry vibe between her and her sister and the kids thing, and and they played into it a little bit. So it was it's good and fun, but they they I felt like maybe well, it was poking a little bit too hard. I don't know. Well, yeah. If 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 you if you factor in the childhood trauma of them just like mentally abusing Reese Witherspoon as a, as a child, including the mother. Then yeah, I guess there would be feelings. Well, tell, you got to tell people what this was because if they if you haven't seen this movie, this is a pretty traumatic thing. Yeah. So when uh, Reese Witherspoon's character was a child, like six, seven years old or whatever, everyone would say that she had cooties. Which oh, you know, cooties, whatever. It's a kid thing. But like, imagine yourself. You know, everything you touch, they go, "Oh, we got Katie's cootie, uh, cootie Katie got I touched it. We got we got to disinfect it." And they would like. Psh- like fake spray like spray they would fake sprayer like imagine that but and then they said they went on for six years and then the mother thought it was cute like, like, like imagine imagine the torture. psychological damage that would go on with that that's that is torture man that's like emotional abuse yeah. <laughs> i feel <laughs> and, and like another thing that i feel too is is kind of odd right if you're the actor or the actress where they're like they're showing an ugly picture of her as a kid yeah that's a picture of somebody, you know. Sure, it's like, sure. Yeah. I, not to not to go and, and and justice for them. I'm sure they got paid, but it's like, how would you feel being the ugly picture? Like, oh, look at how ugly she looked when she was young. It's not like a it's not a computer generated AI yeah. picture. That was an actress. Like, or, come on. Or it's like, or it's like there's there's a comedic role for a quote unquote ugly actor, and it's yeah. like always played by Rachel Dratch or somebody like that. Yes, it was very funny, but it's like she knows the role she's getting cast in. And it's like it's really, it is an awkward. Bad. It's an awkward thing, yeah. But I don't know. I mean, you gotta make you gotta pay the bill somehow, right? Did you feel also the the pregnancy test situation was like just out of place? Like she's yeah. going through her sister's thing, and there's they're they're starting to give you a subplot that she maybe wants to have a kid after Curiosity. she said she didn't. She, but she's it, child curious. I mean, she just ran like if you're curious. And I, look, I'm not a lady, so I don't know what this is. But if you're in the in a bathroom and you're going through somebody's thing, like. And I know it comes out later in the movie that she was feeling like she was late. But at that time, you didn't know that. It's like, oh, let me just randomly take a pregnancy test. Yeah, for real. (laughs) Like, see how this thing works. Like, like, she she did a good job acting that she didn't know. Yeah. Is it a violation to, like, I don't know, maybe ladies, you can answer this. I don't know. Like, she took the pregnancy test out of her sister's bag there. It's like, do you think the sister has, like, a... Has tabs on how many pregnancy tests are yeah, in there. Yeah, you can't just take somebody's it's like, pregnancy wait a minute, test. What my pregnancy test is gone. What's going I, on here? I mean, maybe if it's your sister, maybe it's cool. I don't know, but yeah. you don't just like take somebody. It for, you don't like take a somebody's private, thing. It seems like a private thing, you know. I don't yeah. know. You don't take somebody's thing, in yeah. my opinion. It's not yours. I don't yeah. care if it's your sister's. It's not yours. You don't take yeah. that. Right. What about the church? So, I, I used to go to church growing up. Right. We we went to church all the Christmas and all this stuff. What do you think of this place? And what do you think of Pastor Phil? Like. I wasn't sure about. Would you volunteer for the play? Do you like that aspect of it? No, clearly they didn't want to. I mean, Vince Vaughn clearly wanted to do that, but like it was, it was there was no role for it for Reese Brothers. Clearly, this wasn't a religious family. It's something that her mother recently started up, right? And 
I wish we got more of Pastor Phil. Like I yeah, wanted to see enough. more of the character. I wanted I wanted a ridiculous religious character that was like not genuine and really only after one thing. And uh, we didn't we didn't really get that. Like there were allusions to him being uh, what would you call it? Like a uh, creep. Like a not a creep, but like a uh, maybe a, somebody a, a sex crazed sex yeah, crazed maybe or like somebody that uses their power to like get like it, basically you said it before we recorded. She might not have been the first person that he tried to be in a relationship with. Yeah, quote unquote convert, you know. Yes. Oh, come to Jesus, but now, but not come to Jesus, but you know, here. Yeah, come know, to Jesus. Come, come to Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> it, it almost reminded me of like Phil Hartman's character. Like, I wish we could have gotten some of that flavor yeah. where it's like he's going after these, you know, divorced women and converting them to the Catholic Church, but really it's just converting them, you know, into his bedroom. Do you think they try? Do you think they try? They towed the line because it was a religious thing, where they're like, "All right, we don't want to really want to go there." They kind of went there, but they didn't go yeah, there. They I don't didn't know. Commit. I, maybe they just like they were they were towing that uh, runtime, and there was no time for for, for uh, Pastor Phil. Yeah, hundred or less. Uh-huh. You know, it's, it's yeah. a, you're right, and and I think they probably got on the cutting room floor, and I don't know. I felt like he he they they set him up as this fraud or somebody like you said that was trying to convert women, but. I don't know. I, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't buying it. And for me, like no. you could have four Christmases. You can't be going to a church service. Yeah. The, you're you know on how time, long that you're is. You're on a time crunch. You're on a time crunch. That's people. like you said in the beginning of the episode, this is the most unrealistic part of the, of the movie compared to like Santa Claus. Like I believe a man can become Santa Claus versus make it through four Christmases. It's not, <laughs> not possible. Not possible. Yeah. And I think I was with this Christmas until they went to the church service I don't think I could make it through that. Although that one was a bit more fun. They had guitars and stuff. It's not like the traditional. Because it was organ. like a, it was like a fantastical, a almost spectacle. like it was a spectacle. It was almost like where it's like there's so much going on. It seems disingenuous, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was that it was kind of church where it's like, oh Lord, have mercy, like that kind of thing. <laughs> where it's like, I'm sure the collection plate gets passed around five times. So could could you make it through this one? Yeah, of course I could. I mean, well, well, you have to put yourself. Do we have to put ourselves in Reese Witherspoon's shoes? I, maybe you as bad way. Could you, could you, maybe you'd be Vince Vaughn. I guess. Okay. I'll take, I'll take the role of the male character because yeah, you play the male you know, character. So, so this is my in-laws totally. I mean, I had a blast watching the baby pictures and, and, uh, I would, I wouldn't have minded church. Like I'm not a church goer, but like, sure, whatever you can get. If they're playing guitars, maybe somebody's yeah. playing some, some sweet solos up there and, yeah. and, and the play, I guess that's, yeah, it's certainly, I mean, that's not, that's no church that I'm used to going to. I mean, that was, right. that was like, it was like a rock concert. Same. Same. Yeah. So they make it through this somehow, some way, and they wind up having to go back to Vince Vaughn's, Vince Vaughn's mom's house, who just, to me, I didn't see the connection between her and Robert Duvall. Like, they just did not seem like a match in any way yeah. whatsoever. Blue collar versus basically a hippie. Yeah. yeah, she's a hippie. She was, I mean, com- complete opposite, right? Their house was completely different. And... He described her in a very mean way. I won't even repeat the words that he said. And it's kind of interesting when you get to this house, you see that she's got a younger, younger partner. Oh, it's, yeah. It seemed, right? They didn't really tell you who it was. And then the guy says to Vince Vaughn, let me, let me get your gas money. Let me, <laughs> let me get your gas money. And there's like a weird rivalry there of like yeah. not doing it. And I thought maybe it was, hey, she's dating a younger guy. He's just not into it. No, it's his best friend from yeah, growing up. Former best friend growing up is now could, your like, step stepdad. Could like they were married or date? Like it was really weird. I got the impression they were married. I thought they're. I think they're married. Yeah. Which is like we're talking about violations here. I mean, is this the ultimate violation? Yeah. I mean, I just just I I hate to even like broach the subject, but like <laughs> just imagine if you know. <laughs> You showed up to your parents' house, and it's you know your dad's not there, and it's like me and your mom saying, "Oh, hey, Drew, we have, we got to talk to you." <laughs> okay, let me get your gas money, Drew. I don't, I don't think that would go over too well. No, I and, would and the same and vice, and vice versa. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> it <depends. laughs> it's like it's hard to even talk about because it's like it's so not it's wrong. It's so not right. He goes, I never even thought about your mom sexually until I, until I was over 30. Is that better or worse? I, it's yes and no. I mean, it's better and worse. Like, it's better, I guess, in that he must 
truly love her because it wasn't like a young lust thing. Yeah. So, you know, the older you get, maybe I can understand like, so what, look, as a guy, right, when you're younger, I think you might think like most guys are not necessarily attracted to older women. There's like a thing, right? I guess, yeah. oh, the hot old teacher or something like that. But yeah. you know, you there's like really... one, there's like one teacher in every, right. in every school where like for both men and for guys and girls. But I think the older you get, the more you realize, like, I don't know, so I guess some guys want to date younger women, but I think you realize, like, hey, it's pretty important to have something in common here. Yeah. You know, like being at the same place in your life or someone who's got the same experiences so you can actually relate to them. And again, nothing yeah. that you couldn't date somebody younger or older, but m- the majority yeah. of people will gravitate towards someone their same yeah. age. But you know what? Maybe, maybe he's an old soul, you know? He might be. But, but I mean, you know what? <laughs> what if, like, you know, you know me. I'm a good guy. Yeah. Uh, who who better to take care of your mom than <laughs> no. me? No, right? That, that's the that's the argument that 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 the guy would have, right? True. I mean, look, yeah. the argument is, yeah, you're a good guy. You're my best friend, and yeah. I know you. I would a treat good her guy. right. I would treat you, her right. You would, but but I don't. I can't, <laughs> but I can't. I can't get over the fact that like. No, I can't. I can't even talk about it. It's I, can't I know even it's go like there. it's so it's so weird. But like, all right, so <laughs> I already know what the headline. Are is we to be. assume that maybe they were estranged, the friends, for I for get... for, an, for an indefinite period of time? It's not like they were like if they were childhood friends, right? And then they continue to be friends. They go out to the bar together in their twenties, and then like one day, oh by the way, yeah, not kind of cool. dating your mom, no. <laughs> Not cool. I I get the feeling that maybe like he maybe it was a childhood friend who maybe they weren't friends in high school or Vince Funk graduated high school and like moved away and like was just like they were they were estranged. And then to come to meet this guy 10 years later. Hey, Daryl, what are you doing? Why, why are you with my mom? That that's more OK. It's still not OK. Yeah. But it's still more okay because where like, was he the last ten years? Yeah, if we haven't spoken in ten years and like I f- f- catch up with you for the first time and find out you're dating my mom, it's like that's <laughs> like <laughs> I guess. But it's a little bit easier to swallow than having constant contact with that person. And then oh, by because the way, with the constant contact, it's almost like you're rubbing it in their face and you're hiding it, and then you're yeah. rubbing it in their face. Yeah, because because it would have hop- hopped up out of nowhere. Right. right. It's like, oh, you're hanging out with my mom behind my back here? Like, I'm here with you, man. What are you doing? That's because, weird. Because, let's be honest, who made the first move? Likely likely the younger friend, not the mom. Yeah. There, there's a show on HBO. It was called Mrs. Fletcher. Did you watch that? It was with no. uh, Catherine um, Hahn, I think. I see how you say her name. And the, the whole thing is like, this kid is bullying the 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 other kid in high school. And the the bully goes away to, to college and yeah. then the mom starts taking a class and the kid who was bullied is in the class and she starts hooking up with the kid or like wants to. And it's weird. And it's like a thing. It's like, oh, I'm going to get back at the guy. Like, it's not really yeah. getting back. He actually likes the lady. But I feel like that's a different situation. This is like they're friends. And if you're still friends, no, it's a, it's a 100% violation. If they went away yeah. for 10 years, I can understand it maybe because yeah. maybe it's, hey, I I got, I thought I fell in love with this person. I got to yeah. know them. Right. But I mean, come on, like, it's still not cool. Yeah. Like, you might it's think, like, hey, you know what? I probably shouldn't do this. It's like, hey, you know, we met at a bar, like, uh, just happened to be there. We were talking about, it. hey, you know, I haven't seen, I haven't seen Rob in a while. Yeah, I haven't seen Rob either in a while. What's he up to? You know, blah, blah, blah. And they start to get to talking and they hit it off. That could naturally happen, I suppose. But like, right? You're going to fall in love talking about your son or you're going to fall in love talking about your best friend to your, it's like a weird conversation. Like, I feel like you almost can't talk about the kid because <laughs> that's gotta be how it starts though. Hey, it, ha- used it is. Be, used to be Bobby's friend. What's his name? Well, I forget what, I forget what Vince Vaughn's name is in this movie. Uh, Orlando. <laughs> Orlando. <laughs> used to be Orlando's friend. <laughs> Brad. Brad. I Brad. Think his name is. Bradford. Yeah. Oh my God. I Look, it's, you guys let us know the last row podcast at gmail.com. Let us know what your ruling is on this, but I it's a violation and and no, don't get my gas money. Like he even and says d- he's like, I make does, more money than you. Does does he know him as Brad or does he know him as Orlando? Probably Orlando. It depends yeah. on when he changed it. She called him Bradford, so I'm assuming yeah. that she had a, a hand in changing the name. Yeah, she probably respects the name change, but like I bet that kid knows him as Orlando. They're probably friends, you know, 
in third, fourth grade. I mean, that alone might make it me not able to get through this Christmas. So it's like everything's got something wrong with it. So the first yeah. one is people fighting and sort of like the weird like foods and all that kind of stuff. Well, the it, second, let's call it what it is. It's a white trash Christmas. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a redneck kind of like yeah. whatever it is, right? The second one is it's this weird vibe with like the overly sexual stuff and like the making fun of her as a kid, right? That's like a thing. Yeah, this that one, is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So first one, physically awkward Christmas. The second one is more emotionally awkward. Christmas. Yes. This one is like also wrong. just wrong. Wrong. Like, it's, fr- it's like just a, weird. It's like poison. It's like there's no way it could work. And then you still have the brothers from the beginning there too. Yeah. So you add then, that into yeah. the mix. And then Dallas shows up. And, and then Dallas shows up and it's really weird. And then you got the, the the best friend stepfather situation. That's just weird. And then throw in on top of that, the couples games, which never end well in any yeah. movie. Yeah. I mean, is that ever a good idea? When they have, they've got to get through the trope of, oh, well, they don't know each other very well. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the buzzing, as you heard, like it's just, it wasn't going to end well. So could you get through this one? Because the place itself is very nice. I like the house. Sure. I like the vibe yeah. and the setting. Yeah. But no, the this- weirdness... This is this is poison from the start, and it's like this is the it's a type of thing where honestly, like, if my mom was dating you, for example, <laughs> like I wouldn't go over there. You just for wouldn't Christmas. go. I just wouldn't go. I, like I'm not. We're not meeting unless you're you're broken up or whatever. Yeah, it's weird. I'm not gonna have dinner with you two. <laughs> like I'm just not. I'm just gonna remove myself from the situation. Trying to be your stepdad is yeah. awkward and weird. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Mm-hmm. The only scenario where you would go to that is if you didn't know that they were dating, and that's blindsided. How you found out. You were blindsided by it, which I don't and think it, he it was he. Or I, didn't, I didn't get the feeling. Like I, I got the feeling that he knew. It didn't seem like it. It seemed like he knew. Yeah. So, but but this is where you start to see like is Vince Vaughn really a jerk or not? And I, you know, it's hard not to compare him to his character from the breakup. Is a very similar kind of character, and in a lot of the yeah. movies, yeah, but. You know, he completely gets frustrated at the game and he's flustered about the boyfriend situation and all that stuff and whatever. But like restarts having this thing where she wants to have a serious conversation about having a kid. He completely shuts her down. Like, are you starting to see him being a jerk here? Like, do you think that he's selfish? Because I do. Oh, absolutely. He's absolutely selfish. And I don't think the movie was really hiding it. It's just kind of like they were selfish together. But as soon as one of them had a, you know, a different opinion about the relationship, yeah, I think I think that the it was only, it was inevitable that whichever one started this conversation, the other one was gonna feel a weird way about it. It's a it's a trope, right? Yeah. But they wind up at at then now Christmas number four, John Voigt's house, which is it seemed like then everyone was over and. There's this whole situation where they wind up at the house, and to your point earlier, Reese didn't. She said, "Oh, they kind of broke up over this this wanting to have a kid thing or not," and it seemed like a weird thing to break up over. But she stops in the driveway of this house, looking like Peter McAllister's house, by the way. Oh yeah, financial estate. She wants Vince Vaughn to get out. <laughs> what did you say before yeah. we we recorded? <laughs> he peeled out. <laughs> he's, he's peeled out. He's it was peeled out of that driveway. So. Like yeah. he just he was just like bye. They have like a you know a disagreement in the car on the way, and instead of just sucking it up, he decides to just leave. It wasn't leave, even leave like there half alone. a second later. It was leave her there alone. Okay, bye. You you'll get a, like you'll get a ride with someone else. Okay, see ya, bye. <laughs> like she waited for him to get out. Like yeah, she she did the she did the the woman thing where she waited a beat. <laughs> And he he uh, he did, he, fa- he failed that test. Now what what would you what would you have done in that situation? You, you suck it up, right? You, you suck it up and in. go. You, yeah, then you then you talk about it later. But his his argument was we're not talking about it. I mean, he's the it's same non, character. It's a non discussion as the breakup. Like I'm just gonna go sleep on the couch now, and I'm yeah. not I'm gonna live out here now, and you, I'm marking you, my territory. You want me? You want me to want to do the dishes? Yeah, I mean, there's not much to say about this Christmas outside of like it's the most normal Christmas minus he wasn't there. It was actually like. Yeah. The so, really nice, <laughs> yeah. Mar- Mary Sternberger was there, and uh, with 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 freaking uh, Pastor, Pastor Phil, Pastor Phil, Pastor Phil, and all that, and like they were civil, and the kids were there, and it was like a nice. This is like a, nice a normal, normal looking Christmas. 
It felt like a nice vibe. John yeah. Voight seemed like a mature dude. He was very like, in yeah, it. He, yeah, he gave her a speech, you know, uh, to basically say, I've made some mistakes, but I've grown from them, and I've realized what's important now, this and that. And it kind of made her wake up a little bit to, to the situation. And at the same time, where was Vince Vaughn? At his dad's house, his drinking, dad's house. Uh, drinking beer and, and hanging out in the in the thing. His dad was happy that he broke up with her. I guess it's like if and, I'm alone and miserable, yeah. you should be too. Yeah, and his dad's alone, and he's like, "Hey, you know that's that's right. Don't don't let a woman bring it down. A woman brought me down. You know, marriage is bad. That he's like that's he's kind of like down that road, right? And Vince Vaughn sees it, sees a look at himself in the mirror, doesn't like what he sees. Maybe better go have a conversation with Reese. Yeah, so he, I mean, he winds up going back and, I mean, not to do a whole plot recap, like, they get back together, essentially, but he gives this whole half ass speech of, I'm open to having the conversation about having a conversation, and, you know, that's why, like, I actually don't like Vince Vaughn in this movie, I think he's yeah. a complete a-hole, and it's like, well, I'm good with having this conversation, it's like, she didn't force much on him at all. No, like, it, was, it was all hypotheticals, right? And, and then he was having this, well, but I'm not going to say we're having kids, but maybe we'll have a kid. And, and but I, I don't want to talk about it. And it's like, dude, you're digging yourself a hole. You're supposed to be apologizing. And you're not like, he apologized. He didn't even apologize. He showed back up is what yeah. he did, in my yeah. opinion. So I thought that was the weakest but that, ass but that apology was, ever. Yeah, but that was the start is like, he's willing to concede to have the conversation. All right. It's, it's the lowest, it's the lowest possible, like, it's 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 pathetic a d, it's, it's a d it minus is. it's a d it's minus pathetic. but he, but, he, but he passed he, yeah he yeah. he's pathetic is what it is yeah. <laughs> i mean it's, it's come on but but you know what though it's Try funny harder. though but it's funny that's like the beauty of being in a relationship like that and not being married fair enough because you can kind of like you, there are no legal ties and if you don't like a situation you can you can remove yourself from it but at the same time the beauty of being in a marriage is that if you truly love each other and it's it's a match that really works, you have a fight like this and you work on it to move past it. That's what I was going to ask you because if you're not married, do you not try as hard in that? Right. Because there's yeah. not the, like, well, we got to try because you don't want to get yeah. divorced. I mean, people get divorced, but it's almost like it could break you up because it's like, well, I guess we had a really bad fight now. Whereas if you're married to your point, you, you yeah. would work on it. And you say, all right, like, well- if they're together for five years, it's like, but not married. It's a lot easier to just say, "Oh, it's been fun," but I, uh, you know, we're stalemate here, right? Yeah, well, definitely. If you're married, it's like, this sucks, but let's work past this. Well, I guess it worked out for him because they wound up having a kid and getting another camera shoved in their face after they they didn't tell anybody. <laughs> Spoiler alert! But before we get out of here, we got to rank these Christmases. So I think I know where yours where you're sort of landing. And I think you probably know where I'm landing, but I yeah. think which Christmas, how would you, how would you rank these things? So the ones that you, the one that you want to be at the most to the one that you want to be at the least. So how would okay. you do it? So I know the right answer is four because it's the normal one, it's right? The easy, easy way the out. Easy answer, but I'm going to go with one. You I'm are. Gonna, I, I want to fight my brothers, my, my non-existent brothers. I want to, I want to, I want to have a tap out contest. And then wanna, what, what about after that then? So like second worst, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm I'm flat out because I'm it's gonna be you know Mary Sternberger. So I'm flat out not going to the Sissy SpaceX one with the with with Daryl, my the, former yeah, best you're friend. Not going to that, I'm just flat out not going to that one. That's so, your worst one. So that's your fourth yeah, one. Yeah. So you you're taking oh, you're taking Christmas one and then Christmas two and then four and then three. Well, yeah, four would be the first one, but I don't even count it because it's yeah, like, okay. it's a normal one. All right, fair enough. The thing about three is though that I do like playing games. Yeah, so they got games, and, Just, and they have and they have edible brownies. So that's it's like, true. There's some, and it's a cool little setup. It's it's got something like to that it. House. If you know, if the, <laughs> if, if the if my father-in-law or father stepfather was something different, then maybe we'll have a different conversation. It's almost like. It's the anti cheat code because that would be the best Christmas. Yeah. But they had to make There's it so one unappealing. Big thing, yeah. That it, it's like yeah. there 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 has to be some major problem. Yeah. And that is probably the worst <laughs> problem. It's almost it's almost like, yeah, this house would be great, but it's too bad there's this there's this lion that's in that's yeah. in the house that it's you can kill you. It's gonna kill you if you go in there. Otherwise it, it's a great house. It reminded me of the house from the Lost Boys, didn't it? It was yeah. it was like that 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 house in the yeah. Cali in the northern California. Yep. I think I would say 
I, you're right. Okay, let's take four off the table. Four is definitely number one, but whatever it is, right? Yeah. So I think I would take the the mom's house first, Reese Witherspoon's mom's house first with the the ladies, and I'll even take the church service. I'll go with that. Sure. Then I agree with you. I think mm-hmm. I'm actually going to get my ass kicked Be- by the brothers. Before the awkwardness of, before of your former best friend. seeing my best friend dating my mom. I'm not yeah. down with that. Like, <laughs> I like the house, and I like... You, the you'll theory, take, you will take the physical abuse over the emotional abuse. I, and and whatever's going on in your head, thinking about what's yeah. going on in that house. I can't be in that house where that's going on right now. It's yeah. not okay. I'm not having it. So I'm swapping yours. I'll take the physical abuse second. But then that last one, I'm flat out not going either. It's not yeah. going to happen. And he knew. So if I yeah. knew, see ya. See ya next yeah. year, mom. Not, uh, I'm sorry, mom. Until you break yeah. up, like you yeah. said, I'm not going to see It's him or me. You. It's him or me. Ultimatum time. I want to know what everyone else out there would think. Could you be okay with dating your your best friend dating your mom? Even you if you were the Christmas? nicest guy in the world, Can't. you know this guy's a good guy. He's in he's in your 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 he's mother's G-G. bed. It's not guy's, happening. Guy's GG. He's a good guy. No way. Not down with it. <laughs> not down with it. So anyway. <laughs> Look, this is one half of of a of a Christmas or holiday themed episode. We're going to be back in, in two weeks on Thursday, December 22nd oh, yeah. with another holiday episode for you. Let us know uh, what you guys think of this one. The Last Row Podcast at gmail.com. Leave a comment on the episode's page on the website, thelastrowpodcast.com. Send us a tweet at the Last Row Pod, facebook.com slash the Last Row Pod. Leave us a comment on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button on all of them. And if you're enjoying the show, please consider leaving us a five star review. Thanks to everyone that took the time and left one. Happy holidays. We'll be back again, like we said, with another holiday episode. And we'll see you guys on uh, December 22nd. See you. But he's a good guy, Drew. <laughs> I don't care, man. You want that person treat, in your mother's her, bed? Treat her right. What if, if they... What if... What if... What if the, it was not physical? All right. If it's not physical... No. They I, shared I a bedroom, but they're separate beds. No. But she, they're just they're just they're just emotional life partners. No, I can't. Then can't, he still can't. He still can't. Be a, he can be your caretaker. Can I, can, I, can I call you? Can I call you champ? <laughs> no. Big guy. You don't want your gas money. I don't want your. <laughs>